Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here. Getting closer and closer to that iPhone 12 launch. Starting to get really excited here. There's a lot of physical leaks that have cropped up. Some really exciting stuff, including magnets inside this year's iPhone. I mean, that's a curveball. Didn't see that one coming. And a ton of other iPhone 12 leaks. Quick update for Phone Rebel supporters. So finally in stock, we have these ready to ship. We're gonna get all of our orders out next week. And going forward, Gen 2, hopefully <laughs> avoid this mess, man one and a half years in the making, but people are happy with it so far and it makes me happy to see that. So link down below for those that don't have one yet and a bunch of accessories planned, stay tuned. Okay, so first and foremost, there's a new lens design that has been leaked by Twitter leaker Comia. And this one is a little bit different than what we've seen for sure. So the earlier leak, which suggested that we'd be seeing a square camera layout with the flash in the center and the microphone beneath that, that's apparently not happening. In fact, the earlier CADs we saw kept the same orientation that we currently have on the 11 Pro series. And according to this Twitter leaker, Comia, the LiDAR sensor will be on the bottom and the microphone will be relocated to the top to the left of the flash sensor. And it's simple. It's clean. I like the look of it, honestly. Nothing too crazy. We earlier did predict that the LiDAR would be going to the bottom and it actually perfectly fits. This is the same size as the iPad Pro scaled to the iPhone. Let me know what you guys think, but yeah, it's not going to be an all new camera lens design. Apparently this is it. On the other hand, I received this photo. Third party accessory makers are preparing for that square lens camera layout. I really don't know who to believe here, but I like that there's some mystery here. We still do not know 100% what the camera lens orientation will be. I'm more inclined to believe that Apple would make it a simple evolution as the 11 Pro series already had a radical camera transformation. And Max Weinbach consulted his sources regarding this new camera orientation leak. And although they haven't seen the iPhone 12 lens orientation in the flesh, they're saying it looks weird and they don't believe that Apple would do it. And in my experience, speaking to case manufacturers as we're about to send our Gen 2 to production, many don't even believe there will be four models of the iPhone this year. They're working around three CADs, one for the 5.4, one for 6.1, and one for the 6.7 Pro. Or it's possible that the 6.1 Pro will have the same lens size as the 6.1 non-pro, different orientation, but same overall size. And the 6.7 Pro is getting the biggest sensor with the biggest lenses as rumored by other leakers before. And this one blew my mind. So Apple is apparently putting magnets in the iPhone 12 or at the very least in the official cases for them. So this magnetic ring has leaked along with internal schematics of the smallest 5.4 inch iPhone 12 and the overall cutout for the wireless charger is larger now. And as you can see on the bottom, there's that rectangle cutout, which perfectly lines up with those magnets. So it's possible that these will sit inside of the iPhone. And then I received this from someone and it portrays Apple's official case with that same magnetic ring layout. Looks an awful lot like an arc reactor, just looks awesome. Now, why would you want magnets in the iPhone or in the iPhone case? because you can align the iPhone perfectly with Apple's official wireless chargers and thus ensure an accurate time frame to charge, accurate efficiency as it'd be in the perfect place every single time. How many times have you placed your phone on a wireless charger, woke up and it hasn't aligned or maybe it didn't align perfectly and would work erratically. So this would solve a problem for Apple, not to mention they have patents for this stuff. So it's quite clear they've been working on it for some time. They have magnets in the iPad and now they'll be in your iPhone as well. It's not for sure that they'll be in the chassis. I just presumed based on the cutouts. And what if you don't use an official iPhone case? You'd still be able to line it up perfectly with the iPhone itself. Now the question is, can we incorporate this in our case, some sort of aligning feature, not infringing on the actual shape of this arc reactor? And Twitter leaker Comia says these magnets are not for reverse wireless charging. Some immediately came to the conclusion that it would help with charging an Apple Watch or AirPods in the back of your iPhone. He says that is not the case, but we do have more supporting evidence that Apple is adding gallium nitride to the iPhone 12 series, and thus they would be enabling reverse wireless charge, even though the batteries will be smaller as we learned in the last video. I'm skeptical of this, but going forward, it's inevitable that Apple will of course add this feature. It just seems unlikely that it would happen this year. And personal speculation, I don't believe that those magnets would be used for holding the phone. They're very thin, probably 1 16th, 1 32nd of an inch. So it just doesn't seem like enough to hold the iPhone reliably as we're doing testing with various magnets. And by the way, the latest pop mount here, it's actually pretty crazy. Anyways, yeah, so I don't believe that's for mounting. 
probably strictly for aligning on the wireless charger. Moving on, earlier there was a display leak, supposedly destined for the 5.4 inch iPhone, but we lined these up and superimposed them on the 5.4 inch iPhone. They just did not line up. But from this leak, it was inferred that that notch, the smaller notch, which is scaled for a 5.4 inch iPhone, would be the same size on all iPhones. And off went the rumors about the smaller notch. I believe that is not the case, as we actually superimpose that image on a 6.7 inch iPhone, it lines up almost perfectly, and that notch is pretty much the same thing we've seen on the CADs. There might be a very small variation, but it's unlikely. There was yet another leak, display panel leak after that, showing the backside, and this does confirm that the notch is staying the same on this year's iPhones. It's unlike Apple to do incremental upgrades on something like the notch, especially if it's just millimeters at play. So it's very likely they'll just keep it until they develop the technology to remove it altogether. That's the Apple fashion. Also display analyst Ross Young has commented saying the displays destined for the iPhone 12 will not be 120 Hertz capable as they will not include IC drivers in order to enable 120 Hertz. Max Weinbach responded saying that you do not need IC drivers in order for the actual panels themselves to be 120 Hertz capable. So yes, the panels themselves will be capable of that as they're using Samsung's latest technology, but they will not include the proper IC unit to drive the 120 Hertz, thus making it impossible to enable via software at a later time. Twitter leaker Apple Rumors Leaks claims that the iPhone 12 Max, previously rumored by John Prosser, will be called the iPhone 12 Plus. I think this actually makes sense as the Plus is associated with just a slightly larger size, pretty much same device. And that's the case for the 5.4 and 6.1 inch non-pro iPhones. They'll be very similar in functionality, just different sizes. Speaking of the man, John Prosser's channel was hacked. He has a new temporary account, go follow it. And Twitter leaker Jin Store has given us another look at the Apple A14 even closer. And this one is with the RAM layer showing some amazing intricacy. This is the next generation of mobile computing, five nanometers. It just blows my mind that we're at this point. 15 billion transistors, rumored. And Max Weinbach sources can confirm that there will be a braided cable in this year's iPhone's boxes. I'm really looking forward to never breaking an iPhone cable again. And Twitter leaker Comia has shared the final storage and price specs for this year's iPhone lineup, starting at 699 for the 5.4 inch, going up to 1449 for the Pro Max. Honestly, very reasonable prices considering all the new tech and what you're getting for the money. Now, Apple themselves have confirmed that this year's iPhones will be arriving just a little bit later than usual, a few weeks later, according to them. And this pretty much does fall in line with the fact that Apple could be announcing in September and then releasing later in October, possibly pushing into early November. Before this, John Prosser did mention that new iPads and iPhones will be arriving in October. Unclear if this is announcement or release date, but yes, this year's iPhones will be a little bit late. Digitimes then followed up with another article saying they'd be launching their iPhones in stages. So the first thing we're gonna see are two 6.1 inch models, likely the non-pro and then pro, and then the 6.7 inch and 5.4 inch model following a few weeks later. And Twitter leaker Blue Kanikama shared with us one final leak before departing. I'm sorry to see you go. This is a glyph of potentially AirPods Pro 2, maybe AirPods 3 and it's slightly different in proportion. This is under a new model name, B427, which hasn't been heard of. And this was found in the iOS 14 builds. I don't know, it could be something, could just be an exaggerated AirPods Pro glyph. And Apple may one day change the way AirPods work from pushing air to sending signals or vibrations through your skull via bone conducting technology. New patent details this, absolutely crazy stuff. And the Apple Watch 6 stuff, so a battery has been seen in certification listings, only slightly bigger than the 296 milliamp battery from the Series 5. This one is 303 milliamps. And Twitter leaker Apple Lab is reporting on the new Apple Watch Series 6, saying it'll have slightly thinner bezels, no 3D touch, the no 3D touch was anticipated. Also a pulse oximeter sensor, sleep tracking, and new colors including navy blue. And Max Weinbach clarifies that when the Series 6 watch launches, its mental health capabilities will be backwards compatible with Apple Watches two to three years old. You won't get all the features on those, but the core functionality will be the same. And more references to the Apple AirTag were found in iOS 14, with direct reference to replacing the battery or the notifications you'd get when you need to do that. 
Honestly, really excited for these. I hope Apple launches them soon. And according to iHack to Pro, Apple will be re-entering the networking business. So they may soon get into the business of making airport routers once again. And I'm very happy to see this one happen. And according to leaker Ko Mia, we might be seeing a refreshed MacBook Pro using an ARM processor based on the Apple A14X as soon as this fall. And I thought this was amusing. For the first time ever, you can now restore an iPhone using an iPad, using a new tool called Procursus. Always interesting to see what people are doing with a jailbreak. All right, guys, that's the latest. The iPhone 12 is approaching perfection, but we're not getting everything we wanted in one year. So we gotta wait a little bit longer for 120 Hertz and for the full notchless display, but a great step forward. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Peace.